I'd like to welcome our West Branch, West Branch campus and our Alpena campus and anyone who might be watching online. Uh, thank you for uh, being here today. Uh, today uh, is the second part of uh, a mini-series I'm doing as we'll be kicking off Advent next Sunday. But this week we're going to be wrapping up uh, the John 14 uh, passages. Uh, today we're going to be covering John 15 through 31. And uh, in the, the previous last week's message, we talked about the comfort that we have in Jesus and how Jesus was talking to his disciples about what was going to have to take place, that he was going to have to go away from them in death for God's plan to be fulfilled. And how in John 14, 1 through 14, he was talking through that with his disciples and explaining what that meant and that what he was sharing was from the Father and that the Father was in law with him. And this, this week we're going to be looking at that he comforted them with who he was and the relationship he had with the Father and what his purpose was as the Messiah. He now is reassuring them and letting them know that they will not be alone that they will not be set out on a mission as his disciples alone. He promises the Holy Spirit to those who love him. If you'll read along with me today in, in John 14, 15 through 31, and I think this passage is just a loaded passage just as last week was and. If you go through and you do a, a, a study on the book of John, it can be an extensive, long study. There's so much going on in these passages, but I want to cover some of the highlights and what that means for us. And, and today we're going to look at, at what it truly means to be at peace in, in, through the Father and the Holy Spirit being in our lives. But if you'll follow along with me, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see, see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I love, <clears throat> I love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to, you rem <clears throat> to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, rejoiced because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I, and now I have told you before it takes place. So that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk 
much with you. For the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me. But I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. Like I said, this passage is a very loaded passage. There's a lot going on here. And the first thing I want us to look at is this. What Jesus' words teach us. What do we learn from this passage at the different times and the different points that he's making? What do we learn about being his disciples, about his Christ followers, about being like him, about being in love with him? We cannot grow in our faith without following the way of Jesus. That's the word of Jesus. That's his commandments. That's however you want to phrase The way of Jesus. If we do not take the totality of who he was and who he is and what he taught and what he is teaching, if we do not take that t- the totality of that, we cannot fully receive the blessing he has for us. And here's kind of an overview of of what that means for us. We must confess. The scripture tells us all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We must confess that we are sinners. We must confess that we need a Savior. We must repent. We must confess and we must repent. Repent means we must turn in a new direction. We must come up with a new true north and our compass for our lives. We must start looking and seeing and living in a new and different way. Now this is very challenging because it's the opposite of what our flesh knows and has a desire for. But to repent means to turn and go in the opposite direction. We must be baptized. As Christ followers, we are called to be baptized. Our salvation isn't dependent on it. Our, our witness is dependent upon it. Our truly seeking to be like Christ is dependent upon it. And go share the good news, the gospel. Go and share what God has done for you. Go and share the love that Jesus has poured out for you, that you have received, that you are now pouring out to the world around you. Jesus once asked, well, Lord, what is the the greatest commandment? He said, the love of the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is this, to love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. You can't hate yourself and love God. You can't be down on yourself and love God. Because you see, you're God's creation. He created you. He knew you yet before you were in your mother's womb. Now, have you made mistakes? Yes. Have you gone waywardly? Yes. Are you all that you've wanted to be and all that the world has expected you to be? Probably not. But that's why he sent his son to die on the cross for you. Because he loves you. And if you do not love yourself equally as much as he loves you, and this isn't about a pride thing, this is about understanding who you are in Christ. That you were God's creation, that he molded you and he made you the way you are. And the world has tainted some of that, but God has sent his son to come and restore and renew you. And you must love yourself because if you can't love yourself, you truly can't love those around you. So some of you today, you need to work on how you feel about yourself. You need to see yourself through Jesus' eyes and God's eyes and not your own and not the world's, but through their eyes. That you are precious, that you are worth more than all the gold in the world. You are worth God sending his son to die on the cross for. Because when you believe that and know that about yourself, you can show and extend that love to those who are around around you and in your life whether you know them intimately or whether they're just a stranger that you've met. For us to truly love, we can't love until we know how much God loves us and love ourselves as he has commanded us to love in that way, 
to understanding of who we are in Christ. What Jesus sends to us. So we've seen what what we're called to do to to be like Christ, to to follow him and to, to seek to follow his commandments and his rules and his way of living, to love God, to serve and love one another. But we must not do this with our own strength and our own power, but he will send one to help us. He says, it says that Jesus will ask the Father and he will send the Holy Spirit. What it means is this, is Jesus is interceding for you and for me. That he is sitting with his Father. And he is communicating to the Father on our behalf. On our behalf. So it's like when I'm praying for a loved one who's sick, who maybe can't, can't pray themselves or or maybe they feel like they don't have enough faith to pray and they say will you pray for me will you will you lift me up i'm just i'm weak i'm hurting i i I need something today and so we intercede for that we we call out to god through jesus christ our lord and savior that's why we pray in the name of jesus because it's only because of what jesus has done on the cross that allows us to come before the father so we get to the father through the son And Jesus is interceding for us. He's interceding for you. He's interceding for me. So when we call out to him, he's hearing, he's taking it to the Father. And Jesus doesn't just say he was going to intercede for us. He said he was going to send one for us. The Holy Spirit will be all around us and will dwell in those who love Jesus. Now here's an important part about that, about those who love Jesus. So here's the thing. The Holy Spirit is active all around us. But we can't be filled with the Spirit until we've done that first part. Until we confess that we are sinners, allowing Christ and His His love and His sacrifice to wash over us. And we've turned in seeking a new way. Because in doing that, we allow the Holy Spirit to take up that space and to come in to fill us and to lead and guide us. But we can't do that till we first take that step to go through that process of making a way by loving Jesus. Because if we love Him, we will follow His commandments. And here's the beauty of it. The Holy Spirit is going to teach and guide us on this journey of seeking the Father in our lives. This journey of being more who who God wants us to be. He's going to empower us to do great things when we surrender to the love of Jesus. Because you see, here's the thing that's going on. There is a division There is a division. And it's why we talked about it. It's it's why people, there's people out there who are against God and hate God. There's people who are against Christians. And here's why. Because they cannot see and they have not seen and they do not know. And understand who God is. You see the world And when I say the world here, I'm talking about the world standard, not the physical world that we live in, but the world standard, the way the world judges people, the way the world lifts up certain people, the way the world says, if you live a certain way, you're better than others. The way the world says, if you have a certain skin color, you're better off than someone else. The way the world says, if you were born here, you're less value than someone, valuable than someone that lives here. That, that, that is a world standard. That is not God's standard. You see, the world is blind to the ways of the Holy Spirit. The ways of, of worldly living govern the blind. The ways of the Holy Spirit guide the faithful. 
fear controls the world. Faith, love, peace, patience, kindness, and self-control leads and guides the faithful through the power of the Holy Spirit living and dwelling within them. Jesus' love leads to peace. Jesus' love leads to peace. Jesus laid down his life so the world would know his love for his Father. This is what is meant by that. The world did not destroy Jesus. Jesus laid down his life for the world. Jesus at any time could have flipped the script. But because he loved the Father, he surrendered to the Father's will. And the Father's will was that we would be reconciled to him through the sacrifice of his Son. And hence, creating peace and hope in a lost, broken world. I leave you with my peace that is not like the peace of the world. That's what Jesus said. I leave you with my peace that is not like the peace of the world. The peace of the world is... No one attacking me. The peace that we have in Christ is a peace knowing that we are complete and whole and eternally secure. We have peace in that we are reconciled in Christ to the Father. It's amazing. We are reconciled with the Creator of of the heavens and the earth, of all creation. Yet we were sinners and separated from him. He sent his son to die on the cross so we can be reconciled to him. That we no longer be orphans, but sons and daughters through Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus' love leads to peace. And it calls us to do this. The peace that we have in God calls us to live this way. To live, love, and be filled with peace that comes from the love poured out by the Father. This peace is from the Father in the form of the Holy Spirit. What that means is this. Jesus Christ came and he showed and took those who were with him on a journey to see and to know the Father. He died on the cross. He was raised from the grave on the third day to confirm that he was in the Father and that the Father was in him. And he promised and told his disciples that as I am in the Father, you will be in me. And I in you. And he says, I'm going to go away. I'm going to ascend into heaven. But when I get there with the Father, I am going to ask him. I'm going to intercede for you. And I'm going to have him send the Holy Spirit to be with you. And for God's presence to live in you through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us the ability and the, and the power to have a godly existence in this, that we can reflect who Christ is and his love because of the Holy Spirit welling up and flowing out of us. And to do that, we must stay focused on who Jesus is, the sacrifice that he paid, the words that he taught us and how to live, that we do not live for the pleasures of this world, but we live to be sacrifice to the Father, to be his servant, to live as he desires us to live, not selfishly, 
but selflessly. To understand and to believe that everything we have is a gift from God so that we can pour it out and share it with the world around us. That every blessing we have, every opportunity we have comes from the Lord. And that we need to seek the Holy Spirit in our lives to come and move through us to lead and guide us. To help us make decisions financially, relationally, and spiritually of what God's will is and not ours. That we will surrender to His will and not our will. that will believe in His flesh that was broken for us and not allow our flesh to control us. To believe that we are greatly loved because He poured out His love for us and His grace for us so that we would be difference makers in the world we live in today and forever in eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Live, love, be filled with the peace that we have with the Holy Spirit and love one another. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and His glory will be added unto each and every one of us. And the world around us will see And know what it means to be truly loved and cared for. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise for this day. Lord, we ask that you will continually empower each and every one of us to live for you. Lord, forgive us when we fail you. Restore us and lift us up. And Lord, work through us and do greater things through us than we could ever imagine or ever do on our own. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And amen.